All right, guys, I am not gonna take that out with, uh, with one hand, not gonna work. So I have one bolt left, it's almost all the way out. Now remember, we've just taken the pump off, disconnected the wires, going for these three bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the last bolt out, slide this thing out. I'm just going to stick it on so this part is facing down. This part facing up, this part facing down. All right, so now we're going to check the clutch. So now that you've taken this out, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and move the camera. All right, so we've pulled this whole contraption out. Motor, transmission, clutch. Now we're gonna check the, uh, the clutch here. So hold, hold, the, hold this still and go ahead and try to spin that. Now this one here definitely does not have a bad clutch. Now it did have a bad clutch when I got the machine in, but I went ahead and put a new clutch on this. Now if your clutch is bad, you do not need to take this whole thing off the uh, off the washer. I'm going to put a link in the description below to the part number for this clutch band. Now let me go ahead and grab just a regular pair of pliers here, and I'm going to show you how to take this out. So if you have a bad clutch, you get to this point, your coupler is good, so it's not not messed up. You come up here, you pull this out, and you, you can spin this around. It it moves nice and easy. Like you see how hard I'm trying. I don't have weak fingers. I can barely turn this and that means this clutch is good but if you get in here and you hold this still and you can spin this around pretty easily you have a bad clutch and you're going to want to replace this so I'm going to go ahead and grab a pair of pliers real quick and I'm going to show you how to pull that out all right so I just got a regular if you have channel locks they might be a little bit easier this is the closest thing I had so go ahead and let me see Make sure you guys can get a good look at this. I'm going to grip this spring and squeeze is all I'm going to do. Grab, squeeze, and pull it right out. And this is what the actual clutch, clutch bands look like. And you got all these white pads that grip the side of that. Now there's a bottom side and a top side to this. So when you put the new one in, the bottom... Uh, the bottom is going to have the little nubs and the top of this is going to be smooth so you want to make sure the two smooth sides here are facing up when you put the new one back in so when you get the new one you're just going to put your caps on put the spring in squeeze it together oops I guess it helped if you guys could see you'll get the new one it'll just be in pieces you will have a spring two caps it's pretty uh you, you'll get instructions on how to put this spring. It's just a matter of putting the caps on, putting the spring in between, putting it together. And that's it. Then you're going to have a new one of these. So then just go ahead and take your new one, slide it down over, make sure your flat sides are up. Grab the spring with your pliers, squeeze, drop it down in. Now you've just replaced the clutch on your washer. Now I'm going to give you a, another pointer here on how to put this back together. You want to, and I'm going to take the camera off the tripod so you can see. All right, so when you go to put this back together, you're going to want to make sure that this spring does not hit this finger that hangs down on the brake release. Now how this works is we watch the tub. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this counterclockwise. You see the tub in there spinning right now and what what you want to make sure when you put this back together is one more thing here besides making sure that the spring does not hit this little tab that hangs down because then it won't go all the way up 
but you want to make sure you turn this counterclockwise and push it up. That way it's all the way up because if you don't have that all the way up, you won't be able to get the transmission to mount back on these little, little tabs here. So that's it. I'm going to put the camera back on the tripod and I am going to put this back together. That way you can see how it's done. All right, so we're going to put the transmission back in. You want to make sure you've got your bolts handy. At least to get one started with your finger. That way it doesn't try to fall back out. So counterclockwise, the, the brake is all the way up like it's supposed to be. It's not hanging down a little bit. I got the brake tab over here. I got the clutch spring this way. So they're not going to interfere with each other. And I think everybody should be able to uh, get this part right. You want to put the end of the transmission into the hole in the center of the brake. And it should go all the way up and fit in nice and snug. And go ahead and grab a bolt and get it started with your finger. That way this doesn't fall back out and smash your toes. So I don't think you guys need to sit here and watch me run the rest of these screws in. So I'm not. But when you put the pump back on, what you want to do is because you're going to be working underneath the bottom of your machine, you want to take this top clip, go ahead and stick that in first and make sure you're reaching up under that it's up just like that. And then you'll be able to get to the bottom one. So go ahead and line it up, spin the motor coupler until it drops in. Now that it's dropped in, you're going to be reaching up under. Snap the top clip in. Go ahead and insert the bottom clip. And snap that in. Just like that. Go ahead and connect your wires back up. Tighten the rest of your bolts up, and if you had a bad clutch and you just replaced your clutch, it's going to spin. If you had a bad motor coupler, the only thing you were going to do differently at that point was pop off the uh, the clips that hold the motor onto the transmission. They're the same clips that hold the pump on, and you'll be able to figure that out. Once you drop this down, you'll be able to work on it because it's going to be out in the open. It's going to be nice and easy for you to work on. There's no sense with your cabinet on trying to pull this motor off because if you've never done it before, you're going to have a hell of a time. It's a lot easier just to take the bolt out of the agitator, take the pump off, unplug your wires, slide everything down to where you have nice and easy access to it. You know, I've, I've done this a thousand times. I could do this blindfolded. You know, you watching this video trying to figure out how to do it yourself, you're not, you, you don't have that experience, so it's a lot easier. And you know, it's believe me, it's just a lot easier to pull this down where you can work on it. And that's the best way that it should be done. So if your washer sounds like it's spinning and it's not spinning, those are the two things you want to check. Make sure you don't have a broken motor coupler and check your clutch. And you just saw me take the clutch off and put the clutch back on.